This is a new Intel Arc A580, which was launched last month at $179 price. So let's test it and see if it's worth it. Hit the like button and let's start. I got mine from Amazon for $179 and it is a Sparkle Arc A580 OC edition. I'm definitely happy to see something new on a budget side. In the box we have a voucher code for two games, that's nice, and the GPU itself. It is a very nice looking dual fan GPU with a thick heatsink and metal backplate. Feels very solid. On the back we have a free display port 2.0 that supports up to 8K 60Hz and one HDMI 2.0. TDP is 100 175 watts, so it's a pretty power hungry card, and it requires a whole two 8 pin connectors. That's pretty rare for a budget card, so have to make sure you have a good power supply. I'm going to pair this card with an Intel i5 11400. I have 16GB of RAM clocked at 4000MHz, and the whole build is powered by 650 watts power supply. PC booted right away with no problems. We have a Sparkle logo on the GPU that lights up, and it switches different colors depending on GPU temperature. That's nice. The first thing after adding a new GPU is to get a driver, and for that I downloaded the driver tool from Intel's website. The rest was pretty intuitive. After all updates are done, I have an Intel Arc Control app open. This is my first experience with Intel's GPU, and I gotta say the app looks great. It's simple and intuitive with all the features most users will ever need, from performance monitoring to streaming. Let's quickly go through the GPU specs. It is a PCIe 4.0 card with 8GB of GDDR6 memory, 256 bit memory bus, the max GPU clock is 2000 MHz. This card also supports DirectX 12 Ultimate, so no problem running new games, AV1 encoding for your production work, and Intel XESS support. The key competitors for this card are AMD Radeon RX 6600, which you can find for around $200. For a while now, this card is the best choice in terms of price to raw gaming performance, and from Nvidia, we have RTX. 3050, which usually costs around $220. Let's now check the raw gaming performance we get with A580. In 3D Mark, we are scoring 10,300 points. That's not bad, GPU temperatures stayed under 70 degrees all the time. Moving on to games, Intel claims this is a card for high graphics 1080p gaming. So let's start from low demanding online games. In Valorant, with high settings, getting over 200 FPS most of the time, with a great frame time. In CS2, with high settings, getting getting stable at around 130 FPS all the time. While testing CS2, I got a strange issue where the image suddenly freezes and pixelates. I suspect it has something to do with the monitor, but not sure, this happened only in CS2. Moving on to more demanding online games, Apex Legends on competitive settings runs with an FPS range from 70 to 120 depending on the scene. The game runs pretty smoothly with no freezes. In Warzone 2.0, I see 70 to 80 FPS most of the time with the low settings. I'm getting micro freezes sometimes, but overall pretty stable. In Fortnite with high preset, getting 80 to 100 FPS most of the time, with some drops to around 70 in loaded scenes. In PUBG with high preset, getting stable around 120 FPS. You can see this card is not very power efficient, it's pulling around 150 watts right now. Also notice the GPU temperature hitting almost 70 degrees, and that's with the side panel off. This card is gonna get pretty hot in small PC cases with low airflow. Anyway, as you can see, it handles online gaming just fine. Let's now move to more demanding single player games. In Cyberpunk Benchmark, getting 64 average FPS with high preset. We'd like slightly more minimum FPS, but the game is definitely very playable. Moving on, Elden Ring on maximum settings runs at stable 60 FPS all time. God of War also runs great with high preset, IC FPS in range from 60 to 75. In Starfield, to get at least the console for 40 to 60 FPS range, I had to select low preset, but the game still looks pretty good. In the new Ghost Runner 2, with a high preset, getting over 100 FPS. I see freezes sometimes, but overall the game is playable. I wasn't using any upscaling for the testing, so judging by raw gaming performance, I can say this card can provide good FPS in most games these days, but I also think it's not really future proof. For the newer AAA titles, you will have to count on game optimization or on Intel XES 
DLSS support, which is an upscaling feature that you can use to get more FPS. Moving on to production and creativity tasks, this card has some real advantages thanks to AV1 hardware and code and the Intel XE Media Engine. Those can come in handy when it comes to video production software like Adobe. Also, AV1 encoding will help you to record or stream your games with better quality than any other GPU in this budget. So I think it is definitely worth considering this card. With the price of $180, it provides great performance for production work like video photo editing and it won't disappoint you in games either. Let me know what you think about this card in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.